I was considering making a graph of uh, some school data, and uh, it would be something like test scores compared to uh, free and reduced meal uh, or poverty indications. Uh, the way I typically get data is to go to either the state agency on the web and if they don't have the data, I have found a good source, sometimes quicker, uh, to be schooldigger.com, which uh, spends time looking at data for just about all states. Uh, I live in the state of Washington, but let me uh, pick some other state. I'll just pick our neighbor, Oregon, here on the School Digger site. Uh, I am interested in the whole state, not just particular schools, um, although I can uh, break it down by school. But I want to look at the entire state and then schools within that state framework, and I can show you that uh, in the end product, uh, be more clear what I mean. But first off, I've picked Oregon, and I'm not, again, interested in individual schools. I'm interested in a download of an Excel database um, that shows uh, the data I'm interested in. And I click this little download symbol over here on the right. And it, um, if, if you have not been there before, they'll allow you like three downloads for free. Um, but then you may have to pay for them and they're a nominal fee. Uh, so I got an unlimited license for like six bucks for a month. Um, and I download that particular file and ask me uh, where to save it and so on. I'm using a Mac and using Firefox. Uh, it, it's been downloaded, the state of Oregon data. This little arrow over here is the download. I click that and I see the file that I'm interested in. And I'll drag that file to the desktop so I'll know where to find it. Um, this was for elementary schools. I think what I'll do is on my desktop is create a folder. I do a right click on the desktop, create a new folder. I'll title this um, uh, schools. And uh, I'll drop this Oregon elementary school spreadsheet into that folder just so I'll be able to find it a little quicker. Um, now I want also the middle schools. There's a button here for middle schools and I also want the high schools. So I'm going to download again repeating the same process. Um, I'm downloading the uh, middle schools, dropping it into the folder. Now there is a button uh, whoop, I clicked the wrong advertisement, apparently. Uh, now there's a button for high schools, and I'll click that one. And I can click the download button, and I can download um, high school data. And again, uh, I'll put that into my folder. Okay, I'm pretty well done with School Digger at this point. Now what I'd like to do is build a, a chart, but in order to do that, I need to merge these three different files. So the first process here is to uh, open one of them. Um, and I know that the first one I brought down was uh, this one here, so I'm going to call that Elementary Schools. I'm just changing the name by highlighting it, uh, the title. The second one I brought down was middle schools, and the third one was high schools. Now it is also useful to know, and, and, and when you start titling the chart, uh, what grades are covered in the testing, what tests they actually use. Um, and I can go back to School Digger and get a lot of that information uh, all at one time. Um, now, I've just, uh, but for right now, let's just develop the data into a uh, usable spreadsheet so I can build a chart from it. 
Um, this is the elementary data. I'm going to select the entire database, the whole spreadsheet, by clicking the top left corner. And then I'm going to go up here and say copy. And I'm going to create a new spreadsheet down here by clicking the plus. And I'm going to do a paste. Now, what I'm doing is just simply preserving the originals. I've got the original right here, and I've got a new one right here, and I can start manipulating this. First thing I'll do is highlight the top four rows, because uh, I don't need that data. It's going to get in the way when I build my chart. So I click the extreme left-hand side, and over here in the ribbon under the home, this is I'm using a Mac. It's Excel 2011. I click the ribbon that says delete and I can get rid of those four column or rows. Um, now I'm going to freeze frames uh, so that when I scroll I can always see this header which is the title of each various column. Uh, to freeze frames you just highlight right below it in the Mac application and you go under window and down here it says freeze pane. So now as I scroll through this Oregon data, these are all the schools in Oregon. I get all the way to the bottom, and it's still holding that top line, uh, that header line constant, so I can see it. I'll show you why in a minute, because now what I'm going to do is put in middle schools all into the same database. And I go to my folder on the desktop. I open up middle schools, and now this is a separate spreadsheet and I'm going to select out the, the heading and everything below it. Now I can just highlight the left hand side, drag my mouse down below um, you know, the, the whole spreadsheet and it goes very quickly. So I highlight everything I want to copy and again I go up here to edit, copy, and I go to my original spreadsheet, and right down here is where it's going to put it, and I do a paste. Uh, edit, paste. Now you can use uh, quick keys, you know, hot keys, if you will, uh, but I'm, I'm going about it slow just so you can follow a little bit in case you haven't done this before. Now, I've saved the header for the middle schools to compare it with the header, the title, row with the um, elementary schools, just to make sure that they all line up. I have the same data in, in the same columns. And it would be a disaster if uh, they got out of alignment. But they appear to be correct, so I can now eliminate that header row. row. I don't need it anymore, so I highlight it. And again, over here, I click Delete. Now I repeat the process just one more time and I go down here to uh, uh, set up the next one. Um, well, I need to close this. You can bear with me just a minute while I do the high schools. Again, I'll select from the header down and I'll roll all the way to the bottom. And I've just selected those, so I'll do a copy. And I'll go to my master, which was the elementary school I'm using as the base. And I do a paste. And again, I'll roll up to compare the two and make sure that uh, the headers are the same. And yes, it appears they are, so I can erase that header. Now, I'm going to save it right here, because I now have all the uh, schools, elementary, high schools, middle schools from the state of Oregon in one database. The names of the schools, you can read through that on your own when you download the database, uh, the, how to reach specific information about the school, class sizes, um, how many kids took the test, and so on, are all there. Uh, I'm going to add three rows, uh, I'm sorry, three columns on the extreme left-hand side before I build a chart. 
I do that by just highlighting the A, B, and C up at the very top of the worksheet. I go over here and I say insert. And it just added three columns. The next thing I like to do is freeze the pane so that I can always see these three columns. When you do a chart, the Excel spreadsheet system uh, by Microsoft assumes that the default is x-axis of your chart will be in the A column and the uh, Y will be in the B. And if you have a three-dimensional chart, uh, then C would be used. And I may actually end up doing a three-dimensional chart. Um, so I'm going to move stuff over there and I want to freeze that frame. Again, I go to uh, this window and I, uh, I do a freeze. So I've just uh, Yeah, I clicked the wrong thing there. So I have now frozen that one window, and as I go up and down, um, freeze pane seemed to not work. I must have unfroze it somehow. Now, as I go up and down or to the side, I can see that uh, uh, I can still see the header, and I can also see columns A, B, and C. Um, I want to move some data over into A, B, and C, and the first one that I run across is the average test score. These are the average test scores between reading and uh, math for the state of Oregon. And I highlight the column and I do a copy, just simply a top level copy. And I'm gonna put that, that's gonna be my Y axis, which goes in column B. So I'm gonna put the cursor in uh, row one, column B, and do a paste. Um, the next one I run into across the top is the number of students, and I see that right here. And I'm going to highlight that. That's column U in this particular spreadsheet. And I'm going to do a copy. And I'll put that actually in C. So I put it in uh, row one, column C, and I do a paste. And you can see the data is the same. Here is 782, here's 782. I have to make sure they've lined up because I could offset them by one or two just by mistake. I've done that in the past, so you need to be very careful that you're copying exactly the column across. The last and uh, my x value on the chart, that would be the horizontal line on a graph would be the uh, percent of students eligible for free and reduced meal. That means they are students living in poverty. So I'll copy that particular column and I will put it in um, column A. Um, my data is almost done. I've, uh, I think I'll save it at this point just to make sure that I don't screw it up somehow. Uh, and if I do, I can go back to it because it's been saved. Um, I'm going to, uh, first off, um, I, I've noticed that there are some anomalies here. It, it, it's kind of like the, the number is greater than or equal to 187.1. For some reason, they didn't put the top scores in here. They just said, we have scored somewhere around this. Well, I can't really plot that greater than or equal to, so I'm just going to say that was their score. It's a little misleading, but not by far. For my purposes, um, it'll work just to, <clears throat> excuse me, just to show that they did quite well. So what I need to do is highlight that column, and I'll go up here and do a replace meaning anytime there is a greater than an equal to sign, I want to replace it with nothing. That would be what I have down here in the second choice. So I'll say, then I'll 
picked replace all. And bingo, I find 74 of them that I've fixed. Um, kind of a large number, but again, for what I'm trying to show, it'll work fine. I, I know that there's probably some uh, less than or equal to's also, so I'm going to repeat the process for uh, replace all, and there's turns out there's 10 that have less than or equal to symbol buried into the number. Uh, I think the rest of my data is pretty good, so um, again, I will save it just the way it is. The last thing that I think I should do is sort out any of them, like this one right here, if you can see it, has no data in it. Um, uh, where, where you have no data, it kind of screws up your chart. Again, a machine doesn't know quite what to do when there's no data. Uh, or your graph comes out with weird numbers of people in one spot. And you can't really adjust for it or read it. So to get rid of those that did not provide free and reduced lunch information, uh, I just do a sort. Um, I select the whole database by clicking the top left corner. I go up to this field called data and I say sort. And notice up here my list has headers is checked. So because it's checked, it means the first row will be read by Excel as he headers, not data. And I can pick any one of these. I can sort on low grades. I can sort on uh, the district name. Uh, so I can find particular districts and so on. But in this case, I'm going to sort on free and reduced meal, free and reduced lunch is what they call it in Oregon. And now I've got them all in rank order, starting with zero kids in poverty, all the way up to 100% in poverty or some number close to it. And then I have a bunch here that reported uh, no data. And there's quite a few of them, actually, and I don't like that. But again, it, it kind of messes up your chart. But I have to get rid of them, so, and I still have the original data, so I can go find them if I have to. But I just highlight them by highlighting the extreme left-hand side, and I go over here to the delete of cells and click it, and they all go away. So I am now uh, ready to start producing a chart uh, from this data. And I think that I'll pause here, um, give you a break, see uh, that uh, uh, you can check what you've done so far, see if this has all worked, and then we'll start building a, uh, a chart from this. Um, see you at the next time.